Hello everyone, uh, for those of you who are not aware, this is the um, live TikTok, Rathco TikTok page event, um, New Lease on Life, which is a reading of the book I'm writing. We're going to be starting in about 15 seconds here, at which time the webcam feed will disappear and you will start to hear the reading of the um, story. Hello user 72 etc. Thank you for joining us here. Um, we're going to be starting the reading in 3, 2, 1, okay, here we go. Time for the reading. All right, folks. Well, I hope you're ready. Here we go. Chapter, Chapter one. one. How it, How it all began. began. May, May 1998. It was, it was a hot, hot summer day in June. June. A tired, a tired working young man stepped, stepped out of the local homeless shelter in town Burksville. A tiny town of about only 1,500 people, located in upstate New York, the man rubbed his eyes as he began to pat his pockets, already hunting for his next fix. His name was Craig, and he was a drug addict. And just like the majority of addicts, he would always say that one day he would get clean. And whether he knew it or not, whether he wanted to or not, he would. This is the story of Craig Morrison, whom would quickly become a walking miracle. This is his story, the story in which I decided to mark down on paper, it would seem. As the door to the homeless shelter slowly shut behind him, Craig stepped out into the blinding sun and blistering heat of upstate New York in late June. Craig began to cough as he bent down to pick up a half cigarette that a passerby had tossed down. Craig took his lighter out and lit the cigarette. His lighter looked as though it had been through a war. It was one of those cheap see-through lighters, but the top was all taken apart and he needed to use a piece of sandpaper to get a good enough spark. You would think that Craig would be miserable living on the streets, and he was miserable, but only during the cold months. As Craig smoked his cigarette, he strolled down the street as he stared at the ground, hunting for loose change or another cigarette, anything he could use. Craig knew that if he did not get high soon, he would have to deal with going into withdrawal, which would be rather painful for Craig. At this stage in his life, he had been using for almost five years. Rock cocaine, heroin, speed, you name it. He was what society would refer to as a trash can junkie, meaning that if he could not obtain his drug of choice, he would use whatever drugs he could easily obtain as a substitute. He knew that he had gone on, he knew that if he had gone on using like this, he would probably be dead very soon. Craig stumbled across the street toward a well-dressed man whom was waiting for the bus. The man was wearing an expensive-looking suit with gold cufflinks and buttons. It also looked as though he had been, it had been custom-tailored for the man wearing it. Excuse me, sir. I'm homeless and very sick. Can you spare some change so I get something to eat? Craig said as he did his best to look completely disheveled and weak. Here, don't come back for any more. Bother me again and I call the cops. The man in the suit shouted as he threw a few crumpled up bills at him. Craig very quickly scrambled to pick them up. Wow, ten bucks, all right. Craig whispered to himself as he rushed away. He began jogging. Then, a few minutes later, Craig was full-on sprinting as he turned the corner of Megan Street. He slowed down in front of a small, two-story home that was pushed back in between two larger homes. Craig walked up to the front door and lightly knocked. A few minutes later, a muscular white man wearing a leather jacket opened the door slowly. What the fuck you want, man? I told you to call. How much you got? The man said with an angry tone. Craig handed the man his ten dollars. The door shut, then opened again a few minutes later. Craig took the two small baggies he was handed and headed for his makeshift home, which was a small wooden shelter he built under a bridge. It was out of the rain and wind, and Craig could uh, Craig had used what he could find, scrap lumber and old nails to put it all together. Then he painted it gray so that it kind of blended in with the rest of the bridge area. It was more or less attached to it. Craig lit up one of the four or five partially smoked cigarettes he had gathered from bus stops or convenience store ashtray buckets. As he puffed on the cig, he rummaged around in his backpack until he pulled out a thin hollow glass tube. This was a type of pipe used to smoke various illegal street drugs such as crack cocaine or heroin, which are both lethally toxic and more than capable of killing a human being. You would think that that fact alone would be enough to persuade anyone to stop using. But not Craig. Not today. He thought as he jammed a metal screen into one end of the glass pipe with his drugs on top. 
He then put the pipe to his mouth, lit it, and inhaled deeply. He sat with the smoke in his body for as long as he could before exhaling with a sigh of relief and happiness as his brain was flooded with dopamine and serotonin. Suddenly, he was filled with energy due to the stimulant substance he was just smoking. But of course, this was not enough of a high for Craig. He needed more. So, he pulled out a second bag, along with a syringe. I won't go into details, but needless to say, he slammed that needle directly into a vein in his arm, pushed the plunger, released the belt that had been tied around his arm, and he suddenly slumped over with the syringe still sticking out of his arm. Craig? Craig, it's time to wake up. What should we do with this one? It seems that it is not his time as of yet. He still has a purpose, even if he does not care about his life. Maybe he will care a bit more when he gets a good look at what could have been, as well as what will happen if he continues this way. The two voices conversated as Chris sat up, but right away he became very aware of the fact that he was lying in a burning coffin. What am I doing here? Uh, I can't be dead? Craig yelled, in between subtle sobbing. Suddenly, a giant bright figure filled Craig's field of vision and spoke to him. Look at you, Craig. Look at what you have become. A man whom has been controlled, imprisoned by the evil of drugs. Why should I give you another chance at life, when even you yourself could care less whether you live or die, as you stab yourself, inject yourself, and smoke yourself right down into that coffin you now lie in? You have caused unspeakable mental pain to your family and friends. All of the people whom love and care for you the most have been brought to tears by your selfish actions the way you steal and cause pain and lie over and over again. So you tell me, if I were to give you this second chance, you tell me, what would you do with it? As if I do not already know, Craig, Craig Morrison. I will grant you this chance, but remember this. This time, be mindful of every decision you make, because it may not only be your wife that suffers this time, Craig. Always remember that, pal. I will be back to check on your progress in seven days. Before Craig could reply or do anything at all, whatever this being surrounded by bright white was that appeared so suddenly was just gone just as quickly as it appeared. Craig's eyes shot open as he quickly sat up and tossed the rags and old torn blanket off of himself. Craig began to calm down, realizing it was only a dream. He would breathe a sigh of relief as he rubbed his eyes and grabbed a cigarette from his bag of butts and lit, lit it up. He did not want to admit it to himself, but he felt different all of a sudden. Usually, shortly after waking up, Craig would have to get high on something strong, or else he would risk going into withdrawal, which would make him very ill and unable to function. But he had not used anything yet, and he felt fine. Now, at first, Craig guessed that it was just a matter of time before withdrawal began, but alas, seconds turned into minutes, turned into hours. And after almost eight hours of feeling perfectly fine, he began to contemplate if that dream was not just a dream, but something more. Much, much more. And also... If he, had, if he had been given a second chance at a better life, then he had to use this opportunity to pick himself up and make a better life for himself. Suddenly, he heard a woman screaming. Craig quickly and carefully stepped down the steep hill that led down to the dirt road. Once he reached flat ground, he began sprinting in the direction of the sound until he saw a very thin-looking woman lying on the ground. A man was standing over her, and he had what looked like a gun in his hand. Craig did not have a phone or any way to summon help for this poor woman. But something was not right here. Why am I not terrified of this man? He has a gun. Craig thought to himself as he decided to begin walking toward this man. Now, Craig was a fairly thin guy. He had some muscle, but this gunman, he was easily over 200 pounds, and by the look of him, it was mainly muscle. Hey! Leave her alone! Please? Craig shouted. The gunman slowly turned to look at Craig. You gotta be kidding me. What the hell are you gonna do, skinny little punk? The gunman shouted back as he started to take a step toward Craig. Okay, what the hell is going on here? This man has a gun and he is approaching me, but I'm not afraid at all. What's happening to me? I feel as though I'm being taught or something. But what the... Craig thought to himself as he snapped back into reality. Everything was moving slower than it should have been. Craig watched the gunman raise the semi-automatic 45 caliber handgun. As it was about to be aimed square at Craig's forehead, Craig heard a voice quickly say, Grab the gun with your right hand! Without a second thought, Craig's right hand bolted forward and grabbed the top of the gun. He depressed the locking bar and lifted the slide up and tossed it to the side as his left hand came up and released the magazine. He then dropped the gun as it was now completely disassembled. As he looked up, the gunman threw a punch that struck Craig in the side of the head, but Craig felt nothing. His head did not so much as flinch. 
You will be judged for your sins one day, young man. I do not wish to harm you. Leave now and never touch this woman again, or I will send you straight to hell, you bastard. Do you understand? Craig shouted so loud that the windows of a nearby parked car shattered. The gunman just nodded as Craig shoved him down and picked up the woman whom had passed out. He then headed back toward his little wooden crate by the bridge. The woman swung over his shoulder. How the hell did I do that? Craig said out loud to himself quietly. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes chapter one of New Lease on Life. I hope that you all enjoyed. Please be sure to like and subscribe, turn on all notifications for my two YouTube channels, Rathco Gaming and Rathco Outdoors, and be sure to follow us here on Rathco's TikTok page called Robbie Rath. Second chapter will be soon to follow. Thank you all so very much. If you want to donate, we can take donations on Cash App. It's a money symbol in all capitals, R-O-B-E-R-T-D-R-A-T-H. We're out of time, folks. Later. All right, folks. Well, I hope that you all enjoyed that live event of my reading of New Lease on Life, Chapter 1. As I said, anyone wants to hear Chapter 2, do not worry. I will be announcing the live stream, which I will be reciting Chapter Number 2. I'm still in the process of writing it. And I hope you all enjoyed. And as I said, for those of you who missed the live stream event, you can see the, the recap of this on the Wrathful YouTube channel called Wrathful Gaming. Thank you all. I consider each and every one of you to be a member of the Rathco family of gamers and friends. You all have my love and respect. And uh, until next time, thank you all so very much for watching. Thank you for all your support, and we'll see you on the flip side. Later.